Hello everyone. Welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. By the boathouse, Drew and Carly kissed each other, and Drew questioned whether they ought to be doing that. Carly retorted that she was unaware and unconcerned. Carly slammed the door shut after the two kissed their way inside the boathouse. Drew and Carly both remarked on how often they had visualized a fire raging on the grill outdoors. Olivia was on the phone while in the quartermain kitchen and was not happy. When Sunny walked in and inquired as to what was going on, she explained that the picnic's desserts had vanished. Once inside, Yuri made announcing that the delivery truck wasn't yet there. Sunny spotted the error she'd made when she accidentally had the order delivered to the hotel when she gave him her copy of the order. Soon after, Olivia's phone sounded an alarm, alerting her to a fire at the boathouse. Sunny and she hurried outside to handle it. Nina, Liesel, and Scott were satisfied to skip the quartermain picnic and instead hung out at the Metro Court pool. A hotel employee rushed in at that same moment to alert Nina to the danger. She disclosed that the new chef was threatening to resign because of a massive delivery of pre-made desserts. As Nina soothed the woman, she came to the conclusion that the sweets most likely belonged to the picnic. She gave the woman the go-ahead to inform the chef of the error, and the woman then left. Scott concurred with Liesel's suggestion that Nina ride to the rescue and bring the desserts to the picnic by herself. The three left after Nina referred to them as both evil, but enjoyed the plan. Soon after, Nina entered the quartermain kitchen and inquired about Olivia with Leo. Olivia and Sunny had left to put out a fire at the boathouse, according to Yuri, who arrived and told Nina. Nina bolted from a house in terror. As soon as Sunny and Olivia got to the boathouse, Sunny started throwing dirt on the grill fire. Carly and Drew could hear screaming coming from outside the boathouse while they were inside. Drew admitted responsibility when Olivia questioned who had been in charge of the grill. He and Carly said they were sorry for getting sidetracked. Nana rushed in at that precise moment and flew into Sonny's arms, thankful that he was okay. She informed Olivia that she had the pastries intended for the picnic after abruptly realizing that she had overreacted. They departed when Sunny volunteered to help Nina unpack them from her car. From the boathouse, Carly and Drew retrieved cleaning equipment before starting to clean the grill. Drew believed fire was lovely despite Carly's comments about how frightening it may be. Drew questioned whether she was talking about fire safety or them when she said how much harm a fire could do. She acknowledged that while a part of her had preferred to continue what they had been doing in the boathouse, Another part of her had appreciated the move away. She informed him that he was a hell of a kisser, and then departed, trying to decide whether she was prepared to risk their friendship. Nona argued that Sunny had actually rescued the day by putting out the fire, while Sunny had claimed that she had done so with the desserts. Nina mentioned that she had sensed a vibe between Carly and Drew, but Sunny dismissed it as their private matter. He continued by expressing his preference to speak about her and how happy he was that she was present. They kissed each other. Leo and Olivia ate s'mores in the kitchen, who had consumed the Sicilian Thunderbolt was still a mystery to Leo. She retorted that two love-struck picnic-goers may be stumbling around if he had prepared it, just as Nana had. As he entered the barns, Nicholas grieved Ava leaving him. Someone said, I don't blame Ava, Nicholas overheard. Nobody wanted to put their heart on the line, Spencer said, just to have it broken. Nicholas thought Spencer was referring to Trina. She had moved on, and Spencer admitted that he had not given her the truth. He expressed his happiness for her. Nicholas claimed that he would be missed even if Spencer assumed nobody would while he was in Pentonville. He felt carefree while riding, and he knew Spencer had been hiding out in the stables. Once Spencer was out, he suggested they take a trip to Greece where they could go feast and ride horses on the beach. That photo is nice. Spencer sobbed, I just can't see it, and then he walked away. Victor could be seen in the quarter main living room preparing a drink. She remarked, you read my mind, and he gave her a martini. 
she was given a seat so that they might reach an understanding. She retorted that Nicholas always showed signs of being a typical Casadine as she grew closer to him. Victor acknowledged the complexity of his own family, but he was certain that hers was no different. She stated, I don't pretend to be a saint, to which Victor responded, I just want to be married to one. She retorted, I want to marry someone who doesn't sleep with his son's girlfriend, and continued. Although Victor didn't approve of Nicholas' actions, he did admit that Esm was capable of exploiting a vulnerability. Esm is manipulative, he said, but Ava corrected him, was. Victor toasted, from your lips. Ava was clearly terrified of something, and he deduced that it was getting injured once more. Although he was unhappy in Nicholas, he told her that his priority was protecting the family and that assaulting one Cassadane would mean attacking them all. She remarked that she had no one else to turn to when he questioned if she would choose to be an enemy or family. Ivor moved to exit the space as Nicholas entered to speak with Victor, just as she did. She had to stay, insisted both men. Victor announced that he was leaving the house nevertheless as he drew out a cigar. Anything is conceivable on a night like this, even fresh starts, he added before departing. Spencer and Victor ran into each other outside, and Victor was shocked to see his great-nephew. As everyone was either avoiding him or feeling sorry for him, Spencer retorted that he should have stayed at home. Victor reasoned that Nicholas had said everything that needed to be said, and he thought Spencer had pushed him away. Victor pressed Spencer to consider whether there was anything Spencer could do for Nicholas after Spencer said there was nothing Nicholas could do. Ava informed Nicholas of her discussion with Victor regarding whether they were family or an adversary, because he still loved her and he thought she still loved him. Nicholas argued that they could still make their marriage work. He went on to say that while he wasn't attempting to undo what he had done, he wished she would keep in mind the positive times so they could capitalize on them. He kissed her and pondered whether she would be willing to take a leap of faith with him. It's too late, she said as she retreated. She told him that the instant he had sex with Esm, he had ended their marriage. Spencer stepped inside the space at that same moment. Terry welcomed the arrival of Finn and Elizabeth to the picnic. Elizabeth expressed regret for previously being unkind to them both. She continued, Finn and I are in a great place. Finn nodded in agreement, but he remembered talking to Elizabeth's sister behind her back. Elizabeth inquired as to Terry's communication with Chet. Terry retorted that she was pleased for him and that he was doing well. After saying she hoped the two enjoyed the picnic, Terry turned around and left. Terry bragged about her bravery and how fortunate she was to have Finn, according to Elizabeth. When Scott and Liesl arrived, Liesl made a snide remark about Finn wearing black to a picnic. Scott added that as long as Finn made Elizabeth smile, he didn't care what he was wearing. Liesl groused about the crowd after Finn and Elizabeth left because she wanted Scott to herself. He sighed, that can be arranged, and he let her out. When they were able to have some privacy, Liesl noticed Victor coming closer. Liesl responded by expressing her wish that Victor spotted some poison ivy after Victor said he hoped he wasn't disrupting anything. When Scott asked her where she wanted to go, she said, anywhere but here. Victor grinned as the two left. When Finn and Elizabeth arrived at the stables, he pulled out his phone. She placed his phone on the table and reminded him that he wasn't on call. When they separated from their intense kiss, Elizabeth said that he hadn't kissed her like that in a while. Shame on me, he said in response. He stated he only wanted her to feel secure and content, wishing he had the words to express to her how much she meant to him. She argued that it was his fault that she did. Elizabeth and Finn gave each other another passionate kiss. There has to be a blanket someplace, in Elizabeth's mind. Finn understood what she was saying and immediately hurried to get a blanket. His phone started to ring, and Elizabeth shut the stable door. When she looked at the phone and saw that Sarah Weber had called, she was startled. Terry and Yuri collided, grinning as they did so. Earlier, they had each sipped on cups of Leah's lemonade simultaneously while grinning across at one another. When Yuri learned he didn't know her name, they exchanged names. She was given his arm. 
They started walking toward the picnic when she put her arm in his. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.